we're used to on the ground when we move somewhere. If we want to jump, we push down on the ground so that we can jump up into the air. Um, if we want something to travel a farther distance, right? Like if I want to throw this plane, then I give it an applied force, right? And then I throw the plane. But the thing is, when we are trying to travel through space, that doesn't work anymore. You cannot push hard enough off of the ground to launch yourself up into space. We cannot apply a singular force through one time thing, through like a slingshot, to slingshot a spacecraft into um, orbit. And so in order for something to launch into space, we have to figure out how to push off of the air. Flying is pushing through the air. And so when we push off of that air, we have to use the fuel um, within the um, craft in order to provide that force on the air. So the air will provide a force back to us. So when a rocket is sitting on the launch pad, gravity is pulling down and the normal force of the Earth is pushing back on it. The forces are balanced, which is why the rocket is not accelerating anywhere. It's just sitting on the launch pad, right? Objects at rest, stay at rest. When the engine starts uh, applying its force, gravity and the normal force still exist, but there's that extra applied force from the engine, which is what makes the rocket start moving upwards. The key is that the rocket isn't pushing down on the ground. The force comes from within the rocket, just like when we launch a bottle rocket. So when we get our um, force from within the rocket, it starts moving up through the air, accelerating, and then it gets that friction from the air, which is even more resistance. So as the rocket gets farther from the earth, the air starts to thin and the force of gravity reduces until it finally gets completely out of the atmosphere when there's no longer any air resistance or gravity and there's nothing resisting the motion. So we don't need to accelerate once we get out of Earth's gravity because um, there's no more resistance to our motion and no fuel is needed to maintain your speed in space. Um, any applied force once you get out into space just results in acceleration, right? Speeding up, slowing down, or turning. Once we get close to Mars, the rocket now has been traveling at a constant velocity without any extra force since leaving Earth, but you can't very well crash into Mars at 25,000 miles per hour. So we've got to slow down a little bit. There aren't brakes, like there's not tires that you can slow down. And so we're going to have to apply some sort of force, um, probably with, again, some like rockets, um, with some fuel burning against our motion to apply, quote, brakes, right? Then uh, as we get closer to Mars, the gravity is going to start pulling, right? So we're going to speed up towards the gravity. The air resistance is also going to kick in though, and it's going to resist our motion a little. So we're going to want to keep our quote brakes on so that we can resist this pull of gravity because the gravity and the air resistance are both going to be less than earth, but they're still going to be there. We're still going to be moving way too fast and need even more resistance. And so we're going to deploy a parachute and the gravity, which is pulling us down is going to be opposed by the air. It's going to be opposed by the applied force of our brakes and it's going to be opposed by the parachute until we finally get ourselves to a situation where our falling velocity is stabilized at a slow enough rate that we can land safely. Once we land on Mars, the force of gravity pulling us down, the normal force pushing us up is going to return us to that balanced state um, of rest and we'll be on Mars landed safely until we want to launch again. So to get an object accelerating off of the planet from rest, it takes a huge amount of fuel to provide the force to get it up into space. But once we're in space, because there's no gravity and there's no friction, no fuel is required to maintain a constant state of motion because objects in motion will stay in motion. So the only fuel that's required in space is a little bit of fuel to do some course adjustments, speed up, slow down, or turn a little bit if we need to get out of something's way. Um, but 25,000 miles an hour, we'll just keep cooking on forever. To get ourselves off of the planet, like I said, huge amount of force. So extra rockets are required to launch something up and off of the planet because the fuel that one rocket can contain isn't gonna be enough. So when the fuel is spent from the first stage rocket, it will fall off um, because that extra mass is just way too much to carry, usually into the ocean. The second stage boosters will go until they too fall off. Um, a lot of times they'll fall back to earth in the ocean, but sometimes they just burn up in the atmosphere and become orbital trash. Because again, we gotta get rid of that mass. Sometimes there's a third stage rocket that will continue acceleration, but the mass has to be reduced whenever possible to increase the acceleration at launch. Then we get to the third law with our action reaction. And this is the one that is like truly brilliant, right? Because we can't push off of the ground hard enough to get ourselves out of the planet. So the burning fuel is gonna push forward on the rocket. 
and the rocket is going to push back on that burning fuel. This is then going to cause what we see when rockets launch is that the fuel will accelerate backwards out of the rocket and the rocket will accelerate forwards away from the fuel. And so when we launch, whether we launch a rocket into outer space with you know fuel inside of it or a bottle rocket, we see this same pattern that the fuel goes backward and the rocket goes forward. So you can see it right here, right? Fuel goes down, rocket, you can see the bottle up there that the arrow pointing to it um, goes up and away from that fuel. Action, reaction to launch that rocket. And with the second law, we just keep launching out of more and more rockets until we get up and out of the force of gravity um, and out of the friction of the air into outer space. So things we gotta consider, the last thing is this inertia controller. So there's huge positive acceleration at launch from zero to 25,000 miles per hour. Once we're in space, zero acceleration, and then huge negative acceleration to slow down to zero miles per hour. So there has to be considerations made for what safety equipment is going to be required during launching and landing in order to keep passengers and cargo safe um, and not broken when we arrive at our destinations.